well, it's half past four in Abu Dhabi, beautiful time of the day, birds are singing, sun's going down, bit of a breeze. I'm just heading over from the hotel, which is right by the track, easy to walk to the circuit every day, lovely. Uh, to the, actually to the F2 GP3 paddock, because uh, impressed as we all were by Ferdinand Habsburg's drive in Macau, and it has to be one of the great performances of the year, I think, in any category. There's something else today. I should add that the GoPro camera I'm using right now is the actual camera that, ha that uh, Ferdinand had in Macau, so I'm so pleased that we were able to do that and to get the uh, footage that he shot for us. But today, here in Abu Dhabi, I think there was an achievement of similar stature, not quite as spectacular, but certainly in terms of uh, what he did today, it was pretty much up there. I speak, of course, of George Russell because his day began here in Abu Dhabi with an untimed practice at GP3. He's the new GP3 champion, of course, drives for ART. So he did an untimed practice at GP3, then he rushed over the other side of the circuit to the Formula One paddock, jumped into the Force India Formula One car, did the full FP1 session, trying lots of bits on the car. When he was running, he was 10th or so, right there. Very, very good job. And then out of the car, rushed back to the GP3 paddock, got into the car and took the pole for a GP3 race. Uh, and of course, in the context of motor racing over the last 40 years, I suppose you could say, yeah, well, that's what drivers used to do all the time. It's not what happens in 2017. It's not the norm. And I, I think it's very refreshing to see that. And he's a very cool, laid-back guy. So I'm going to try and talk to him now. Not that easy, but because um, he'll be debriefing and all sorts of things. But um, if I can grab him, I'd just like to get him while the adrenaline's still running pretty high because that will have been something that we won't see that often. I think F F1 to F2 you can kind of get your head around. F1 to GP3 and then back to F1. I wonder what was more difficult, getting into the F1 car after driving the GP3 car or driving the GP3 car after driving the F1 car. I'm gonna to have to ask him that. I mean, it was quite difficult jumping into the F1 after driving GP3 this morning. So this is such a huge difference in the cars, the power, the grip, and the power steering. It plays a huge effect for your mind, really, just because you're fighting with a GP3 car or an F2 car with no power steering like a pure old racing car. Whereas now with the F1 cars, obviously, you have the power steering and everything's nice and smooth. So that's a bit difficult and then, um, when I jumped back in GP3 for qualifying, the first first two laps were a bit tricky. I think I was P17 at one point, but I uh, no, quickly understood where I needed to go. And... I have raced Pietro in the past in MRF. I was I was runner up when he won the championship, but you know I was I wasn't far away in terms of uh, qualifying pace, and then in the race also I was catching up to the to the front guys the last couple of laps. So it's also encouraging and. And it shows that that I can do also the job if I if I can uh, you know get the chance. So it was nice to, to step with with Pietro on, on that podium in Bahrain, where you know women uh, are not taking that that serious. Made a bit of history, probably. Yes. So I think nobody was expecting a girl there in, on the podium. I, I got congratulations from from the representative there from Bahrain and. Um, and it was the first female in 20 years of history of the series on the last race. was was a nice feeling. The new car, um, it'll be testing again in a couple of weeks' time here. Good. Good. Um, and, and, and a small test in Bahrain for a couple of days as well. And then we'll evalu evaluate it from there. How much has the halo had any effect on production? It's delayed us about a month, waiting for the specs um, from the FIA. Um, and it's picked up a bit of weight as well, so. The, um, the French Grand Prix is only one hour from my house, so it's really oh. at home. <laughs> so what is your hometown? Uh, next to Cannes. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. You know Patrick Tomlin? house. Yeah, I know, I know. And I know you have a lovely cap there. You're obviously a Jules fan. Yeah, you knew Jules? Yeah, we, we, yeah I, I knew Jules uh, uh, yeah, during, uh, during when I started uh, karting, 2006. I yeah. was uh, in Brignol and the father had uh, the track, the karting track of Brignol. And I know well uh, Jules. Uh, yeah. There's no cuts allowed. I can't wait to start hyping up the crowd as I know you're amazed. Heading right to the stage. I'm a sort of the old the, uh, of course, mid-season was a difficult time for you. The car was off the pace and you broke your collarbone. Yeah, uh, <laughs> wrong timing, really. <laughs> the thing was, was yeah, uh, 
yeah, I broke my collarbone. Um, I came back, and to be honest, the first race back wasn't that bad. I thought, okay, we. I mean, I wasn't quite there with pace, but I wasn't yeah. terribly slow. So I thought, okay, we. I mean, I've I've lost, I've missed some time out of the car, but I'm back in the groove straight away. Yeah. Um, but then there was a then Silverstone, Monza, Spa, Perez. It was all just, yeah, just just going wrong, if I'm honest. Um, and yeah, obviously collarbone wise, fitness wise. Um, to me, it wasn't too bad. I think I, um, I have to say, yeah, thank you to my trainer and, and to the people who, who, who did the surgery on me. Um, I was quite comfortable with, with fitness straight away. Well, that wasn't really the main issue. It was more, as I said, just a feeling with a car yeah. that I was struggling with. Yeah. Um, Silverstone's always a tough track physically, but that was the only track really where I thought, okay, I can feel my collarbone here a bit, <laughs> but yeah. It looks like away from the track, it's been a fun year with you and George and Fukuzumi and hanging out. Yeah, a lot yeah. of that going on. I mean, we're we're at each other's houses uh, more than more than we are. I think Fukuzumi and George they're probably at my house more than I am at my own house. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I seem to come back from whatever, and they're, and they're at my house, I'm like, okay, fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we get on well. I think we. Um, I've known Nirei for uh, George. I've known since I must have been eight years old. Uh, Nirei, more recent, but we yeah we all we all get on well, and I think Nirei is going to be living in England next year, so we're all going to be. Um, yeah, hanging out, I guess. And you know Charles very well. You raced with him last year, of course. <laughs> Tell us about that last lap with him. Uh, yeah, it, um, the last lap, sorry. The, I knew, I, obviously, it's, last, it, it's the last lap. We're all going to try things. Um, and I knew that, obviously. It will get desperate. I knew it would get tight. Um, and in the hairpin, obviously, I see him just, just shifting, just doing a bit of a different line. And I thought, OK, it's coming. Um, but to be honest, I didn't expect the touch. Um, I think it, the thing is, is if, if there was no touch in my eyes, um, I would have had the clean exit. And Charles would have already been tight and he would have had a bad exit. And that was that, that would, that would have been the race gone. But um, we did touch um, and it just meant that he, on the exit, he could be right beside me. Yeah. Um, and that's what, that's what uh, inevitably gave me, yeah, I mean, yeah. That's where he overtook me. So, yeah. but but so, he yeah. also kind of used you as a guardrail going into the chicane as well. Yeah, exactly. I mean, to be honest, the chicane one. Is, I, th I think that's more racing. I, I think I would have done the same. Were you actually touching at that point? Yeah, we were. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, the thing is, if you, uh, the way I saw it a little bit on the onboard is just, I go in and I'm just about to go on power. That's the point where you where you yeah. just get off the brake and you go on thrust. Yeah. And as soon as it, I want to go on throttle, I have the snap of oversteer. I'm busy fighting a, an oversteer moment where right. I should be just on throttle. And, mm. and he's come up alongside me. And it's like, oh, yeah. OK, here we what go. What can you do? Yeah. yeah. And I'm kind of just stuck. I mean, of course, in that sense, I want to just squeeze yeah. as much as I can. But there's only a limit to what you can do. Sure. And, and I had it last year. I had a massive crash in GP3 with that exact, exact same thing with uh, Tatiana. Um, Mm. And yeah. So. What did he say? What did you say to one another in the cool down room? <laughs> Not too much. To be honest. <laughs> Not too much. Um, it was more, yeah, you know, uh, I didn't <laughs> want to say too much and he didn't want to say too much. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, we get on well, don't get me wrong, yeah. but um, that kind of stuff, there's not really too yeah. much to say. It, to be honest, I thought that we would get called up to the steward, so I don't want to say stuff which maybe could go against me I get or, it. or go against it. So it was just more like, okay, you know, keep your mouth shut and wait till, wait till we go to the stewards. But obviously that, that case got dropped. So anyway, that's it. Well, very best of luck for next year. Hope you get a really good ride for Thank next you. year. Your dad used to race, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah he's still, I mean. Is he, he still having fun? Yeah, no, not anymore. He's retired now, but um, yeah. He, yeah, obviously always, always having to keep him up to date. And he's telling me, you know, what to do here, what to yeah. do, make sure you do this, make sure you do that. But yeah, it's, um, yeah, he, he, he came to, he hasn't come to a race recently, but he was in, in Malaysia last year because he's, he's normally working around Thailand and Malaysia. And so he came to the Malaysian race, uh, which was nice. Mm. I, won, I won that race, so that, that was nice for him to see. Excellent. Um, but yeah. Um, Such I'm sure a shame that circuit's off the calendar it, it now. It was awesome. It was really cool. And it, even Lovely the whole circuit. place and, yeah. and, and the atmosphere of the people, uh, even just the, just, yeah, it was just really nice to be, yeah. uh, be there. Um, but yeah, we'll see. <laughs> My, my story is, is very different to others. Um, I started racing when I was 17. I didn't do any go-karting. Um, and yeah, my first race ever was at the Montreal Grand Prix as a support race to the F1 race. So uh, I had never been on a track with cars before, with other cars before. And 
um, yeah, to, that was six years ago now. Um, but now to have, yeah, at the time I was applying to colleges, I was, motorsport racing was not, it was a dream, but it was not, uh, not part of my sort of designated yeah. life plan, let's yeah. say. Um, and, and yeah, to now be racing in Europe, to have, have made the move and now be a successful American driver. I mean, I, I had lived in Europe before. My, my parents, we live in Switzerland as well. So it, it made the move to, to Europe easier. Um, because I had already spent almost half my life in Europe, but um, in terms of the racing and the competition, uh, it was a totally different, different experience, and I had to learn a lot to be able to, to get to this level. And well, very international driving for an Italian team, of course, Trident, great team. Hey, George, how are you doing? Yeah, good on you. Yeah, it was a good race. Yeah. What's going on? Right. What's going on? Um, going to the F1 paddock now, but um, I tried saving the tyres a bit in the beginning to fight towards the end, but difficult with the with the DRS here as well in the first straight and then you got it in the second straight so you can't try and overtake someone in the first one and then they get you back in the second one too. It, yeah. it was a tough race but nevertheless I was in, in the position to take advantage of when uh, the guys ahead of me crashed or whatever so he forced good way to end the season. Well I was going to say how did it feel to be starting your last GP3 race ever? Uh, well it felt fine to be honest just uh, treated it as if as any no emotions race. no special no, emotions? No the emotions were all like, over in, in Hereth really and just came here to, to have fun uh, not do anything stupid is obviously. I'm not. <laughs> no point crashing well, the, the car. Or, hectic, yeah, yeah. The start was a bit hectic. Yeah, I went for a bit of an no, optimistic, optimistic move around the outside of turn three, which didn't quite pay off. So, hopefully for the team, there's no damage. But uh, yeah, in the it, end, it looked home. good on the slow mo. Quite high oh, off really? the ground, actually. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, uh, it was difficult. That corner kind of drops away at the exit. So when you're on the yeah, outside, outside, you understeer. Yeah, you're understeer yeah. wide. You can't yeah. even see where the exit curve is. So I thought maybe I've got this, and then next thing I know. Mine is forced me straight off into the, <laughs> into the yeah, exactly. So, uh, but nevertheless, good result. Interesting T-shirt, not Force India. No. Factory team today. <laughs> well, I'm a Mercedes F1 junior driver, rented out for the two uh, okay. FP1 sessions. So, uh, now I'll be supporting. I'll be supporting both teams, but no. Uh, so. AIT over here and uh, Mercedes when I'm not doing my force and duties. I enjoy having a good afternoon. Thank you very Final question. I was, I was just going to say, it's quite an interesting time for an American to be in the position you're in with Liberty, with the US Grand Prix being heavily promoted now, and potentially with other US races coming onto the calendar. Absolutely. It's an exciting time. Absolutely. I mean, um, yeah, with the, with the changes to, to Formula One management and um, potential uh, races in, in New Jersey, New York, my, my home city, my home state. Um, also, Long Beach, maybe. Uh, we'll see. But Austin, as well, is a fantastic event. And I was there from the first year and was also there this year. And it was, uh, yeah, well, the city is amazing during the weekend. And um, really, it's a, it's a great event. So if we can bring more, uh, more US races, that would be great. Um, I think we need a successful American driver as well. So. Hopefully and now I'm in the really, position. We need a really strong road to Formula One. As exactly, well. a and bit I like think the road to Indy, and we exactly. need to really develop that. And I, th I think I n we need to get some good American companies behind uh, yeah. behind the top American drivers. Yeah. Um, and also, yeah, if there could if, if there could be a couple more teams on the grid with the changes to the cost structure in, in Formula One, making it more um, more viable for a team to, to join Formula One, um, that would be that would be huge for. For, for young drivers trying to trying to make it in, in Formula One.